Hello YouTube, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In today's video, I want to talk about the Excel 2019 exam, and we're looking at the first subdomain called Manage Worksheets and Workbooks. Overall, this accommodates for 10 to 15% of the overall exam. I'll go ahead and throw up a graphic so you can see what we're going to be covering today. In this second video of the series, we're going to cover the subdomains Customize Options and Views and Configure Content for Collaboration. Let's go ahead and jump into Excel. We're talking about the Excel 2019 exam, and we're looking at the first domain called Manage Worksheets and Workbooks. We're on the subdomain Customize Options and Views. The first thing it tells us that we should be able to do is to customize the Quick Access Toolbar. The Quick Access Toolbar is this section over here on the left hand side of my screen. To customize it, if I click this More drop down, I have quite a few options. The first thing I'm going to show you is that you can actually drop the Quick Access Toolbar to below the ribbon. And all I have to do to do that is to click Show Below the Ribbon. And notice it's now down here. To move it back up, all we have to do is click show above the ribbon. Most likely you're probably not going to be asked that on the certification exam though. So let's look at some of the other things. In this section, you have some of the more commonly placed items for the quick access toolbar. So if I wanted to add email, I could just click on this. And now the email icon is there. If I click this, it will put this workbook into an email so that I can begin sending it off. But we're not limited to just what's put in this list. Let's go ahead and click on more commands. And in this window, by default, it puts you in the popular commands and there's a lot of features in here. For example, I really like adding and removing filters. So I'll go ahead and bring that over. But the clear filters, I don't see in this list. If you click this drop down list, you actually have a whole lot more. And I know that the clear filters is on the data tab. So I just want to click there and click clear all filters. But within these groups, you have a lot of customized sections here that you can add features that you probably wouldn't run across in the normal ribbons. But now that we've added that, all we have to do is click OK. And notice that my quick access toolbar went ahead and updated for me. The next thing that we're told that we should be able to do is to display and modify workbook content in different views. You can modify the views over here in the bottom corner of your Excel workbook in the status bar. And all you have to do is just click here and notice that the page view changed. However, you probably want to go to the view tab and in the workbook views group, change between the different views. The page layout view allows you to see how your page breaks out. And of course, you can quickly add a header or a footer from that view. The page break preview allows you to see how if you were to print this workbook out, how it would print. And you can actually click and drag these lines to make it fit all on one page instead of using the page layout tab. But I prefer the normal view, which most people do. And now that we flip between the different views, notice I can actually see where that page is going to break throughout my workbook. This subdomain says that we should be able to freeze worksheet rows and columns. For this, we want to be on the view tab. We're in the window group and we want to click on freeze panes. Now there's a few options here and we're going to look through different ones. The first one being freezing the top row. If I click that, if we look over here carefully, it's faint but the line got just a little bit thicker. It's a little bit more distinguished. Now watch what happens when I scroll down. Notice that that top row is always visible within my document. If I go back to freeze panes and select unfreeze panes, that's no longer the case. Let's look at some of the other options. The next one is freeze first column. So if I click that, that line over here has now gotten thicker. And if I scroll, to the right, notice that that first column is always visible within this document. We'll go ahead and unfreeze panes again. Now the third way can be a little bit tricky, so I want to encourage you to practice it. But what it will do is depending on where your cursor is, it will freeze the panes to the top and to the left. So if I put my cursor in C5, I go back to freeze panes and I select freeze panes. Watch what happens. The line is after column B and the line is below row four. Now, if I scroll down, notice that the first four rows are displayed. And if I scroll right, notice that the first two columns are displayed. 
it can take some time to get used to that feature. So again, I want to encourage you to practice doing that just so if you have a question like that, you're not fumbling through and clicking around to try and get it to work. We'll go ahead and unfreeze the panes. This subdomain says that we should be able to change the window views. In our window group, we have a few options. We can click new window. But what it did was it opened up a brand new view of this same workbook that I have open. If I go back to the view tab, if I click arrange all, notice that I can actually arrange these two windows. If I click that, notice it just stacked them based upon the settings that I had. Let's go ahead and close out of this and open this window back up. You have the ability to split. So if I put my cursor over here and click split, notice it broke my workbook up into four quadrants. Let's unsplit that. We can click view side by side. Now I have another workbook open. So if I click this, notice it shows me both workbooks and I can go through these settings. Let me go ahead and open this one back up because I want to show you this one. It says that we can switch between our windows. So with two workbooks open, I could select the other workbook that's open just by clicking that and then going back and selecting the other one. This subdomain tells us that we need to be able to modify basic workbook properties. We want to go to the file tab and where we're going to do that is in the property section. We have some that are listed by default, but if there is a tag or property that's not displayed, all you need to do is click show all properties and notice that that property list grew. And now I have things like subjects. So if I wanted to type in Excel here, I could. Now I want to caution you with that said, my students tend to want to add a space after typing a word, and that's going to get you marked wrong on the exam. You want to make sure that you only type what's in the taskbar. And from my experience, I felt like the task question on the exam was very obvious as to any text you needed to go ahead and type out. So we'll go ahead and delete that space. When you're done, you just want to click out of that section to set the text. The last thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to display formulas. In this worksheet, I have a lot of numbers, but there's one column full of formulas. Now, for this, it's probably pretty obvious, but in a workbook that's a little bit bigger, it might not be so obvious. So we're going to go to the formulas tab. And in our formula auditing group, we're going to click on show formulas. And notice we see here that the J column is the one with the formulas in it. We're looking at the subdomain configure content for collaboration. The first thing that we're told that we need to be able to do is to set a print area. To do that, we want to select the range that you want to make a print area. For this, we'll go ahead and select the table on this worksheet. Now we're going to go to the page layout tab. And in our page setup group, we're going to click the print area dropdown and click set print area. This subdomain also tells us that we need to be able to save workbooks in alternative file formats. We'll click File, Save As. From here, I'll click on Browse. This window should be pretty familiar to you. You should be familiar with typing in your file name. Some things that I want to caution you, though, is on the left-hand side, be able to navigate to your save location. Most likely, where you'll need to save is under this PC, but you should feel comfortable looking for the folders where you need to save your content. And then this is really where it's at, save as type. In this dropdown, we can see that we have quite a few save options and you should be familiar with them. Some things to note is you can save it as a macro enabled workbook. You can downgrade your workbook. You can make this a web page. We have Excel template. We can make this a CSV file. And of course you have things like PDF, but we're gonna look at that in just a minute. Again, you should be familiar with the different save features. We'll go ahead and close out of this. And what we're going to go is click on export. In this section, we have the create PDF XPS document. And if I click that, I get the same window that I saw before for PDF. And had I chose PDF in the dropdown for save as type, I would have got these options as well. Some things to note, though, are open file after publishing on the exam. If you got something like this, you might want to uncheck that. You have the optimized for, you have standard and minimum, and you also have this button here, options, which gives you just a few more features, such as what you're publishing. I'll hit cancel there because I want to show you one other thing. If we go back to the export, if we click on change file type, you also have this section here. We're told that we should be able to configure print settings. So we'll go to the print tab. At the top, you have the option of changing the amount of copies that you're looking to print. 
in our settings, you can do a few things. You can print active sheets. You can print an entire workbook. You can print a selection. You can print the selected table. You can ignore print area. You can select the pages that you're looking to print. So maybe I only want page one. So I would do one to one. Or if there were 25, you could do one to five. If you only wanted the first five pages. You have the option of printing on one side or you can print on both sides. Collated versus uncollated can be tricky. Collated would be if I had to print five copies of what I'm looking to print, it would print every page of the first copy before moving on to the second copy. But uncollated is a little bit different. Of those five copies, it's going to print all of the page ones that I need before moving on to page two and printing all of those and then moving on to the third one. Some other cool things in this section, though, are the ability to change your margins and create a custom margin from here. And then also you have the scaling. And then if you want to click page setup, you can also play around with this window here. And then the final thing that this subdomain tells us that we need to be able to do is to inspect workbooks for issues. So if we click on the info tab, which is where you go when you open up the backstage view, when you click file right here in this section, check for issues. If I click that, I have the option to inspect document, check accessibility and check compatibility. You should be familiar with all three of these. Let's go ahead and look at inspect document first. It's going to tell you that it's going to be saved. We'll go ahead and click yes. These checkboxes tell Excel what we're looking for. If I said to remove the personal information from the document, you would want to make sure that document properties and personal information is checked. Whereas if it's headers and footers, you want to make sure that box is checked before you click inspect. As I go through this, I can see Excel found a few things. But if I wanted to remove the personal information, all I would have to do is click this, remove all, and it went ahead and removed that personal information. And now that we've done that, we can actually just close out of this box. Let's go back to the file tab because we need to look at check for accessibility. And checking for accessibility is to check the workbook for content that people with disabilities might find difficult to read. So if we click this, notice I'm getting quite a few warnings. The first one is this picture right here. It's saying it's missing alternative text. So if I click this right here and I click this drop down, it's giving me some recommended actions and I can click add a description or mark it as decorative. If we add a description, it will add all text and it will help satisfy that error. And then we have some more down here. You should be familiar with using the accessibility checker. And let's go back to the file tab because we need to look at checking for compatibility. What this does, it allows Excel to check to see if there are things in this workbook that might conflict with previous versions of Excel. If I click this, I actually have the option of looking at specific versions. Some things to note on the screen in addition to checking is I can check this box, check compatibility when saving this workbook. And I also have the option of copying to a new sheet, which is going to list some of the errors that we could have.